Hi, my name is Bud Dunham and I'm the town manager in Sandwich and it's the week before town meeting and uh, my goal today is just to try to go through the annual town meeting warrant that will be presented to the public next Monday night, uh, May 1st at 7 o'clock at Sandwich High School. Um, and my purpose here is just to give you the simplest explanation I can on the articles that are on the warrant. Um, and as I see fit, I might add a few uh, side notes if I think it would help people get a better understanding about uh, what each article does. So the first article, Article 1, um, relates to the receipt of the town reports, which uh, we should have in time to hand out on Monday evening. And then in addition, it uh, allows the selectmen to do a really brief presentation on what's in our long range plan for the calendar year 2023. Um, that long range plan is printed in the back of the warrant every year. And I think it's a really interesting document for the public to look at uh, because it gives a great overview of what us as staff try to accomplish during the year. And it's very detailed, it's uh, about seven pages um, it's worth a look though, and if you compare year to year, you can see what some of those changes have been. Um, in my opinion, Article 2 is the most important article on the warrant, and that's where we approve the FY24 budget. Um, there's state law that says if a town doesn't adopt a budget for the following fiscal year that's balanced and approved before June 30th, none of us open our doors on July 1st. So that would include school, school police, fire, DPW, and all the smaller departments. So it's really critical that we adopt a budget. Um, Article two encompasses the vast majority of what we finance for the upcoming year. The total town budget in real round numbers is about $100 million and about 90 million of that is voted in Article two. It comes from several different sources. Most of it comes from uh, the phrase raise and appropriate, which you hear a lot at town meeting. And that means that we're uh, either raising it from taxes or from other receipts that we get from other sources during the year. Uh, so again, a uh, really quick overview, about 90% of our budget is approved in Article 2. If you compare the total town budget and all the financial articles that we're voting on on Monday night, and there are about 14 of them, um, and compare it to the prior year, it's about 3.5% more than the prior year, which equates to an average tax bill increase of about $240, not just for Article 2, but for all the financial articles that are on the warrant. Um, one other point I uh, make about Article 2 is once that article is voted, uh, usually all the financial department heads and I get each other's eye at town meeting and we sort of give each other the unknown thumbs, uh, invisible thumbs up because really once that article is voted, uh, it's critically important for the town and that's really what most of the work of the select board and the finance committee has been for the six months leading up to town meeting. Um, and I should also point out that on every single financial article in the warrant, um, there's consensus between the select board, the finance committee, and any other committees that would be involved for that specific article. So there's no differences of opinion or different recommendations on the financial articles. Article three is for our four enterprise fund accounts. Uh, the easiest way I could explain an enterprise fund is that uh, money's generated from those departments and that money that's generated is then used to fund those departments and we try not to use any tax money to appropriate money for those four departments. And those are our cable public access uh, service, which people are watching right now, um, our DPW sanitation division, the Sandwich Hollows Golf Club operations, and the Sandwich Marina, which in our lease with the federal government is technically called the East Boat Basin. So those four departments are covered underneath that vote in Article Two for Article Three for the enterprise funds. Um, Article four is to set our spending limits for all of our revolving accounts in the town and the school. The simplest way to explain a revolving account is a great example is the recreation department could run a program. They're allowed to charge people to pay for that program and the instructor for the program. And then the fees for that, that people pay, then cover the expense of the instructor. So. Um, we are not allowed by state law to make any money on those, but it's important that we have these revolving funds in several different smaller areas in school and town operations. 
Um, and so right now there's a, a requirement under state law that we have to vote the spending limit cap or the maximum amount that we can spend on revolving funds each year at town meeting. Um, legislation's been proposed to allow towns to just vote at once and you would only have to go back in the future if you were gonna raise that limit. Um, but for now we have to vote that every year. Article five is our capital budget for the upcoming year. Um, we had an excellent year uh, leading up to fiscal year 24 in terms of our free cash certification. So we're trying to do a little bit more for our capital improvements than we normally do. Uh, the grand total of what we're trying to come up with is just under $1.8 million. About 85,000 of that will come from the golf course revenues so they can pay for a truck that they need that will be used throughout the year. Uh, but the remainder, about 1.7 million, are uh, listed all in the warrant. And some of the highlights are um, some uh, replacement of DPW equipment, um, just over $300,000 for a matching portion of a federal grant that we received that's in excess of $1.3 million to improve the Jones uh, Road culvert, which is off Route 6A in East Sandwich. And it's um, probably culvert that people are most familiar with that often gets topped in storm events and prevents access for uh, emergency services and the public in that one section of town. So again, that's a 25% a match that the town provides for a federal grant that we've already received. Um, another important component of our capital project this year in terms of the list is $300 to further our efforts to study the current DPW facility and to relocate the uh, downtown uh, sandwich substation for our fire department onto the, the one location at Route 130 where our DPW barn is. Um, and those facilities, if you've ever been in them, they're really in difficult sh shape. The public's done an incredible job the last decade uh, improving town buildings. This is really the last of those uh, improvements that we need on the town side, hopefully for the next 40, 50 years, which would be great to check off the list. Uh, this will help us get to the next step in the process, which again would require a much larger vote at town meeting, likely at least a year from now. Article six is where we receive our state money for uh, improvements to public roads. We get about uh, just under $800,000 a year from the state to help with our uh, road improvements. We are allowed to carry those over from year to year. So if there's a larger project that we're working on, trying to fund from that source, we can carry those over for a successive year. Um, there's been a big push statewide uh, to try to increase the chapter 90 amount for all communities. Um, all the statistics show 10 years ago, which you used to be able to pay for a mile of road now only pays for about two thirds of a mile of road. So the money doesn't go as far, but the state hasn't increased that allotment in many, many years. So that's, that's sort of a long-term effort of all the towns in the state, not just Sandwich. Article seven is the first of uh, three articles where we transfer money from uh, funds that we bring in through the year and then transfer them for a specific purpose that town meeting previously voted for. So Article 7 relates to a cell tower lease uh, for an antenna that's on top of the high school. Years ago, a special fund was set up so that those receipts that Verizon pays the school, uh, they have to get set aside when they come in and then they get reappropriated at town meeting and they can only be used for the maintenance and improvement of the exterior ath athletic fields and facilities at the high school. So the amount we're transferring this year, and I'll just give round numbers, is about $35,000. $500. Article 8 is another one of those articles that's honoring what town meeting voted previously. So since 2013, 20% uh, of our beach parking revenues get transferred each year to a special account that can only be used for funding future ocean beach and dune renourishment projects. Um, this year we're transferring about $145,500. Again, that reflects 20% of what we brought in at all of our beaches and parking lots last year. The reason it's more important than normal this year is uh, the Army Corps of Engineers plans to dredge the Cape Cod Canal late this calendar year. And in doing so, if they're able to afford to pump that sand onto Town Neck Beach, which we hope they'll be able to do, they've asked the town to pay for any uh, beach and dune grass planting and also for any protective fencing that has to go up temporarily. So we plan to use this money in this account to fund those costs. And then Article 9 uh, relates to the Sandwich Promotions Fund. 
Um, that was established uh, many years ago, and it's been amended a few times through the years. So the amount that we're transferring this year is right around $72,500. Um, of that amount, um, similar amounts are paid directly to the uh, Sandwich Chamber of Commerce and to the Visitor Services Board. And then half that amount gets paid directly to the Canal Region Chamber of Commerce. Um, Article 10 is uh, a little bit interesting. I think this is the third year in a row we've had to do this for the marina. But because of the rising cost of fuel prices, um, as you'd expect, uh, buying fuel at a marine facility costs a lot of money. And with the price of gas going up and diesel fuel, um, the marina has had to spend more of their budget than anticipated to buy the gas. Every gallon we sell, we make money on that stays with the marina fund, but we've actually are short on money for the fiscal year that we're in now. So this isn't for July 1st, it's between now and June 30th. Uh, so for fiscal year 23. So Article 10 transfers 350,000 from, again, the marina account, not from taxes, to the marina account, so the, the marina operating budget, so they can buy fuel between now and the end of June, sell it and make more money that goes back into that account. It's sort of circuitous of what I just explained, but that's, that's what we need to do. Um, for the future fiscal year, FY24, we've increased substantially the line item in the marina uh, budget. And again, that's back under Article 3. So if that goes through, hopefully we won't have to take a similar vote like this next year. Article 11 relates to um, uh, an interesting national topic, and that's the National Opioid Settlement. Um, Sandwich was part of uh, one of the few towns in the state that was on the initial lawsuit to try to recapture some of the expenses and costs that we all experienced because of the opioid crisis. Um, over time, all 50 states joined in on that effort. And when the states did that, they represented all the towns, not just the ones that took part in the initial lawsuit. Uh, we were one of the few towns on the state that actually jumped in early on and provided a lot of information and backup about what our costs have been through the years. So with these national settlements that you may have been hearing about on the news, um, as those funds roll in, um, you would expect that they'd be able to put directly towards what the purpose of the settlement was. But unfortunately, the way some of the state laws work and regulations for financial accounting, um, the state is saying that unless we transfer that money to a special account, it would revert back at the end of the fiscal year, close out, not be able to be used for the purposes for which the whole settlement occurred. So we're having to vote, which we're doing under Article 11, to transfer the total amount that we've gotten so far, which is $218,600, into an account that can be used to help do things like uh, public and private, social, educational, um, behavioral, public safety, and other services to try to um, you know, help with substance abuse prevention efforts and harm reduction. So that's something that's really important and that's a little bit unique. Uh, similar to what I mentioned on a, another article previously, the governor's office has filed uh, a bill with the legislature that hopefully gets approved before our next town meeting in May of 2024, um, that we won't have to take this vote each year. It seems um, really strange that Massachusetts is one of the few states that if we don't take this vote, you basically lose those funds for the purposes for which the whole settlement was agreed to. So hopefully people support Article 11 and hopefully the law changes so we don't have to keep voting that year after year. Um, there's a payment plan on those settlements that go out in different numbers of years depending on the settlement, but in general they go out roughly 20 years. Article 12 is the first of four Community Preservation Act articles, um, also known as the CPA. So Article 12 is the, the vote that we take every uh, town meeting. It sets aside our administrative funds for the upcoming year. It, uh, we're required under the laws that govern the CPA that 10% of our Community Preservation Act revenues have to get put in three accounts, one for affordable housing, one for historic preservation, and one for open space and recreation purposes. So we have to designate those 10% allotments and then the remaining 70% goes into a catch-all account that could be used on any three of those purposes. Um, and then finally, we also are required to fund any debt that we've incurred from prior years. That number's gone down recently as, as some uh, open space purchases and other projects have been paid off, but we still appropriate money towards 
debt that we have that's being paid from the Community Preservation Act. So again, Article 12 is a normal article. We vote on it every year, um, and it sort of sets up what we need to do for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, the next three all relate to specific projects. So Article 13 covers the uh, improvements that are planned uh, for the Sandwich Adventure Playground, which if you're familiar with the Oak Ridge School entrance and the side entrance to the um, Human Services Building, the Sandwich Adventure Playground is a town playground right across the uh, driveway access. And so $500,000 is being recommended to uh, significantly improve and redo that playground area. It's important because it's the one playground that's not on school properties other than the small playground at the marina. And uh, what's difficult is during school, while school's in session, um, you really can't go to those playgrounds. So this one is the one that's available to the general public uh, really 24 seven. So um, it's something that's supported by a number of the boards that have reviewed this. Article 14 relates to some uh, preserving of some historic records, a relatively small amount, $13,000 from our town archives uh, that would go towards preserving these records. Uh, most of the money is gonna be focused on newspaper, uh, old newspapers in town to try to preserve them and or get electronic copies of them made. Um, so again, 13,000 under Article 14. Um, and then lastly, of the CPA articles, Article 15, um, is recommending that we transfer $43,500 for an affordable housing project that's actually being built in the town of Dennis. And it's related to uh, people with autism and similar disabilities. Uh, what's unique about this project, where it is in another town, is that um, people with autism and other uh, issues throughout the Cape are all allowed to have housing there, not just people from Dennis. So uh, what's happened is the group that's organizing that has reached out to the towns other than Dennis and asked them to fund 1% of the total projected project costs. So for us, it's about $43,000. Um, I know because of my colleagues in Dennis that they've already appropriated about 900,000 to help with that. So I think it's fair to say that the boards that reviewed that request felt where sandwich um, residents will also benefit from it, that it was a worthy expense. So I think what's interesting is the, the other than Article 1, which is a, a fairly quick non-financial article, the last 14 articles I went over are really all the financial articles for the whole uh, warrant. I know they're probably the least interesting of the articles. They're probably not the ones that um, people have been talking about if they're aware of what our articles are. But speaking from a town staff perspective, those are critical, again, not only for us to run our operations, for the school, public safety, DPW, all the smaller departments, um, but it also funds some really important capital projects and other things that as a, a progressive, uh, you know, forward-looking community, we really should be looking at. Um, selfishly, once we get past Article 14, I breathe a sigh of relief because all the work that's taken place for many, many months um, is all tied to those votes. So hopefully they go well and go fairly quickly. Um, the articles, the rest of the articles are a little bit different, so not financial in nature. So I'll try to explain those as best I can. Um, Article 16 relates to the number of uh, alcohol licenses that the town is able to distribute. Um, many, many years ago, the state, through the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, set caps for the towns and cities on how many licenses they could give out for both restaurant alcohol licenses and um, for retail licenses, i.e. package stores. Um, Sandwich has bumped up against our maximum limit for several years now. Um, this past year, you may have read that there were several uh, restaurants in town that were trying to secure annual alcohol licenses as opposed to seasonal ones because they're open year round. Our population is very different in Sandwich than most of the rest of the Cape, which is more seasonal in nature. And so the select board uh, realized that we were having uh, more of a demand than the actual number of licenses that we had. So in speaking with our state legislators, who are always very responsive, that's Senator uh, Susan Moran and Representative Steve Ixaros, um, their offices suggested that the proper way to do this is through an article at town meeting. And what's interesting is town meeting and the state require us to identify a specific location for each of those license um, facilities. So we contacted all of our existing license holders and asked them 
you have a seasonal license, are you interested in an annual one? And so 10 of our local businesses said, we are interested in going from seasonal to annual. Half of those are retail licenses, i.e. Uh, convenience stores or package stores, and half are restaurants. So that's what the public is being asked to support. If the public says okay, and this is true for about four articles that we'll talk about in a minute, not only does it require the town meeting vote, but then we give that vote to our legislators who I mentioned earlier, and then they have to have it approved by the state legislature and signed by the governor before it actually comes into effect. That process in the best case scenario typically takes 12 to 18 months, if not longer. So just because it gets, if this gets voted um, positively under Article 16, we still have a waiting game until it goes through the state process before it can be implemented. Article 17 is interesting in the sense that it follows up on um, work and money that the voters approved last May. Uh, you may remember that there was about a um, almost a $16 million debt exclusion approved for uh, a number of school department improvements at each of our school buildings. And one of the key things that we wanted to address was to trying to get the school central offices uh, relocated from the wing school where they are now because we're going to be disposing of that property soon to the human services building on Quaker Meeting House Road that used to house the um, senior and community services department and our nursing department. Um, as many people know, we opened the Center for Active Living uh, around uh, Thanksgiving and with that work um, and with that building opening, it's no longer needed for town purposes. So the school, as we speak, is doing work on the interior to renovate the building for their central administrative offices. So Article 17 transfers, and this is a state law term, the care, custody, and control of that building from the select board to the school committee for educational purposes. Um, that requires a two-thirds vote because it's a change of ownership of property or control of the property. Um, so that's an important one. Um, so uh, not very controversial. So hopefully that flies right through. That's Article 17. Article 18 is with the opening of our new offices at 100 Route 6A for most of our municipal departments. There were a few references in our general bylaws that uh, referred to the addresses of buildings we're no longer in. So particularly in our waterways bylaw, which is section 9.02 of the town bylaws, it mentions two buildings and addresses that aren't valid anymore. So article, all our article 18 does is remove those references and takes that language out. Um, article 19 um, is the first of three articles related to the town charter. Uh, the best way I could explain the town charter, it's, it's our governing document on how the government and sandwich is structured. It's a high level overview document. It's not supposed to get down into the weeds too much. Um, it doesn't deal uh, with day-to-day -day operations. It's supposed to focus on the big picture items. And so uh, periodically, typically every five to 10 years, um, a committee is formed, a charter review committee by the select board to take a look at the charter to see if anything needs to be changed. So Article 19 is the longest article on the warrant. I think in terms of number of pages, it goes for about 15 pages. Um, the entire charter is uh, spelled out on those 15 pages. And you'll see when you see the warrant, it's highlighted text. Um, additions to the document are highlighted in bold and words that are being taken out or concepts that are being taken out are, are through a strike through uh, font. And so people will see it pretty readily at town meeting. I think it's fair to say, even though it's the longest article of the three char uh, charter articles, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, some of the primary things that the recommended general changes do, or uh, I guess most people would term them housekeeping changes, uh, the name selectmen, the board of selectmen, which is under state law, would be switched to select board. Again, this is the way it has to formally happen under state law. Um, in addition to that, there's laws that have changed at the state level over the last several years that need to be updated. And so uh, the proposed general changes to the charter under Article 19 reflect some of those um, legal changes that had ha happened since the last time the charter was updated. And it's also fair to say that there's some parts of the old document that based on feedback that different town officials provided that the Charter Review Committee felt were either no longer necessary and could be removed 
again, because you're not supposed to be that descriptive in a charter, it's supposed to be a higher level overarching overview of what the town structure is. Or if there were things that were lacking, some minimal language has been recommended. So I think when you actually see the warrant and see what those proposed changes are in the scheme of things, they're all fairly minor and straightforward. Uh, similar to what I said about that um, article about the liquor licenses, this after town meeting would then require a vote, uh, approval of the state legislature and approval by the governor. So if this gets approved, we will then submit it through our state legislators. They will bring it forward and it usually takes, again, roughly 12 to 18 months before it's actually into effect and becomes valid. Article 20 relates to the charter as well. So the same things that I just said about if Article 20 is approved, it would still have to go to our legislators, approved by the appropriate committees at the state and the state legislature, and then by the governor's office. Again, typically takes 12 to 18 months. Um, this one issue under Article 20 is very focused. It's to make our last of our elected town department head positions, the town clerk, uh, they, is still elected to make it appointed. And I think what's important about this article is with the town clerk's uh, position becoming appointed, the incumbent elected town clerk would automatically become the first appointed town clerk. So it's set in stone that if this gets approved, our current elected town clerk, Taylor White, who's extremely competent and knowledgeable, would become the uh, first appointed town clerk uh, of the town. Um, as I had mentioned, if this gets approved, it has to go through those steps at the legislature, and we have to wait for that to be uh, completed. Um, Article 21, um, I'll do my best to explain. Um, it's non-binding in the sense that if people say yes, the article still has to come back to a future town meeting to actually be adopted. And Article 21 relates to a non-binding directive to the Charter Review Committee to propose at a future town meeting um, converting from an open town meeting form of government where any registered voter uh, could attend, speak, and vote to an elected representative town meeting, which typically means um, that representatives would get elected from different uh, precincts in the town and they would be the ones who vote at town meeting, not those who are generally just registered voters. Um, so if we ever, uh, if this article passes, the Charter Review Committee would go back, do the work on a representative town meeting. There's a lot of details that have to be specified. You don't just vote to do it. There's, um, I've seen a list from town council. It's more than a dozen different items that would have to be addressed as part of that effort. And then that would have to come back to a future town meeting for formal approval. What's a little bit unique about this article compared to the prior two is the state considers changing from an open town meeting form to a representative town meeting form to be a high enough or, or a significant enough change that not only would they require a vote at town meeting, there would also have to be a, a town election ballot question that voters would have to approve as a second hurdle again before it went through that same process that I mentioned a few times where the state legislature would ultimately have to approve that change and approve it with the governor before it would become adopted. So not to be redundant, but this isn't an important article and I know um, several people have been speaking about it in the general public, but Article 21, if town meeting does vote to consider changing from an open town meeting to a representative town meeting, there'd be a future vote at town meeting a ballot question at a town election, and then the state approval process. The next three articles are petition articles. And um, just to give you background on what a petition is, under state law for an annual town meeting, if 10 registered voters um, submit a petition article by a certain date that's specified in our bylaws for an annual town meeting, or 100 registered voters for a special town meeting, um, and those votes are certified, we're required by law to submit the petition exactly as it was presented. So that's what's happened with the next three articles. So Article 22 is the so-called commercial uh, sale uh, prevention or ban on single-use plastic water bottles uh, for um, mostly for water, I believe, is what the actual language specifies, of less than a gallon. So. Um, this would be presented to the voters. I think this is uh, multiple times it's been presented. Uh, sometimes it's passed, sometimes it's been overturned, uh, sometimes it's been approved, sometimes it's been denied. So that's before us again. 
Um, Article 23 is uh, called the Plastic Reduction um, Proposal that the petitioners submitted. And this would ban the commercial sale of plastic food containers and single-use plastic utensils. Um, and again, that will be specified more in the warrant. I don't want to explain uh, these articles. They're not coming from the town. They're not coming from the select board. These are submitted by petition. Um, you know, we have no say in what the language looks like. And um, I'm not saying this is the case, but even if the language is not legal or there's typos and it's written poorly, we have to submit it as we've been giving it. Given it, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's the case with these, but we have to print them exactly as they've been received. And lastly, Article 24 relates to an amendment of the town's general bylaw. There's a section under, uh, a part under section 4.05 that prohibits the sale of rolling papers in town. Um, that was adopted back, I believe, in the 1970s. So this would overturn that pro prohibition and take out that sentence or two so rolling papers could be sailed, sold at stores in Sandwich. And then um, lastly is uh, Article 25, and that's when town meeting adjourns until the town elections, which happen uh, under the town's uh, bylaws on the Thursday following the date of the annual town meeting. So all of our town elections will be held uh, on Thursday, May 4th. And I believe the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have two new polling cases. Uh, places depending on your precincts. We tried to get the polling places out of the schools so the schools could stay open on those days if they so choose. And so uh, three precincts are going to vote at the Corpus Christi Parish Center and three precincts will vote at the new Center for Active Living. Um, so it'll be the first time at both locations. So we're excited to see how that goes. Um, one thing I should mention, in addition to the officials and the uh, positions that we're electing at the town election, there is one ballot question that I'll explain, um, and that's to remove the police patrol function in the police department from civil service. Um, it's a very important article um, to help professionalize our department and to help move uh, things forward. Uh, civil service was adopted by the town. Um, civil service itself in the state goes back to the 1800s. Uh, the town voted in the mid 60s to become part of civil service only for our police department. Things have changed so much over the ensuing decades that um, it's really not as valid as it used to be. So the patrol officers in town are supportive of getting out of civil service. And uh, longtime sandwich uh, town meeting attendees will remember over the years, the police chief position has been removed, the deputy chief, the lieutenants, the sergeants. So uh, they've all been out for at least a decade or more. And so this would remove the remaining positions from civil service. So that's a simple yes or no vote. That's the only ballot question, ballot question number one, but that is listed under Article 25 in the warrant. It doesn't require a vote at town meeting. It's just there for informational purposes. So people will know uh, what they're voting on on Thursday, May 4th. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I tried to keep that as brief as I could, um, but those are the 25 articles that'll be presented to the voters on Monday. Uh, if you're a registered voter, please come out um, and uh, honor your civic duty and participate in town meeting. It's critically important to a town like us. Um, and I know I said this a couple times, uh, really from the biggest perspective, the town shuts down on June 30th unless people vote to support what's been recommended for our financial articles. And it's obviously critical that we keep moving forward as a community. So again, thank you for your attention to this and I hope that was helpful. Bye.